David, I'll start with you and the origins of this movie. Um, how did the book come to you, and how quickly did you realize this was something that might be in your and Luca's wheelhouse? Uh, it was submitted to me by a producer I'd never met, um, and she had attempted a couple of times to get it to me without success, and so went through my lawyer, which is an odd way to do it, and with a note that said, I think this is for you, and I didn't know what that meant until I read the book, but I was so happy but also confused that it was a love story because I would not written one before in my career. And I guess I understand why this particular love story was maybe, maybe came my way, but I was just um, particularly excited at the idea of a story that was about two young people seeing one another, being seen by one another, in the context of so many um, competing dynamics, both between themselves, within themselves, with the world, and sort of told through the grammar of a kind of road movie that's also a horror film, that's also a coming of age story. And, you know, I was halfway through the book and thought I know one person, one director I would trust to do this with because Luke and I had had such a lovely collaboration on a bigger splash. And so I, yeah, <laughs> thank you. So uh, sent it his way. And um, by the time there was a script, uh, Luca had the bandwidth to actually read it and, and moved on from there. And so, Luca, when you read the script, what was the thing you responded to initially? Was it the love story? Was it the, the horror aspect? Was it the road movie aspect? What, what interested you? I think the first thing that, that had a very, struck a big note with me was the great quality of the script itself, the, the wonderful writing of Dave, which was very inspiring and compelled me to, to really immerse myself into the, into the read. The characters were my strong pull, like these characters that are um, living through this profound loneliness and sense of abandonment in this, against this incredible background that there is, that's the Midwest of America. And, and their, as Dave said, their quest for being seen and, and to see the other, um, that was quite touching to me. Yeah, well, you know, obviously a movie like this, the casting is everything, and, you know, Taylor, I thought you were just fantastic in this movie and really, uh, you know, really pulled me in. And, you know, for you, when you first read the script, what was your reaction? I mean, what excited you about this? Were you scared by it? Um, well, I met Luca before I read the script, um, and... I was just excited at the prospect of being able to work with him. Um, and when I read it, you know, I, of course, have never read anything <laughs> like this story before. Um, and I also really love these parts of America. And I just thought that it was a magical combination, Luca and the cast and um, the story about this strange girl who is, uh, you know, questioning whether she can be alive in a way that is sustainable um, on the earth. And yeah, it was a um, themes that I wanted to, to explore. So I was just excited. I wasn't scared at all about the, the cannibalism. I, I thought, oh, that's an interesting avenue to, <laughs> to explore these feelings. Well, that's interesting that you talked before you read the script. I mean, Luca, what did, you know, uh, I guess, why did you want to talk with her before giving her the script? Well, because she's a formidable actress and I saw her in waves and I was struck by her. And when we spoke on the Zoom, the, we had a very delightful conversation, which left uh, more, wanting more, more, more company, more... Uh, uh, you know, acknowledgement of one another, and uh, and um, I had a very gut instinct that Taylor Russell from 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 Trey's movie Waves was the right fit. And when I met her online, I felt like very strongly about it that I was right. Thanks. <laughs> now. Michael, you're only in one scene of this movie, but your character is so fully realized and so terrifying. Um, what kinds of conversations did you have with Luca about this guy, and how did you approach him? Uh, he reminded me yesterday that I had asked him a lot of questions. Uh, on the page, it was 
uh, one thing, but it didn't necessarily tell you where they were from or much about what their lives were outside of this particular day and this occurrence. So I asked a million questions and any opportunity that, you know, Luca may be interested in having me do anything, I'm there. So it's, it was a, a thrill to sort of find my way inside of the mind of who this guy might be. And David was so amiable and fun to sort of help me ask the kinds of questions that got me a little closer to what I thought he might be. Uh, but it was delightful and really fun. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was just that. So we talked about Michael's character, who's very creepy. Then you've got Sully, the Mark Rylance character, who's extremely terrifying and creepy. And obviously, some of that comes from his performance, but a lot of it comes from the music. Uh, the music that accompanies him is fantastic. And Trenton Atticus, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you scored those scenes with the Mark Rylance character. Um, the whole film is anchored by an acoustic guitar. And that was, is the love theme, and it appears in almost every other theme. Um, Sully is such an extraordinary character, and we had had the experience of watching the film, a, a longer version, with no music at all, and it almost didn't need any. So <clears throat> it kind of became about capturing the essence, I think Luca called it utter perversion. <laughs> and with that guidance, we set about starting with an acoustic guitar. And there's some flutes. There's some blowing spittle in a saxophone. Um, there's some disorientating synthesizers. But I almost feel like when you pull back the curtain on what the elements are, it makes it less interesting. What we're trying to capture was the essence of this person. And I feel like, well, it seems like it worked. And I think that's what music, good music, really does. It's not really this bit or that bit, it's like, how do you feel when you're watching it? Well, in, in a broader sense, I know that you guys like to create a sort of sonic landscape, for lack of a better word, for each movie you do that's very specific. And Trent, for this movie, what were the kind of overall guiding principles for the score as a whole? Well, when we first spoke with Luca um, on this project, which we were excited to be invited to participate in, um, he was very clear that this is a, a tragic love story, and the focus of this is this um, intimate journey of these lost, lonely characters finding each other and trying to find potential, potentially finding some uh, hope and making a life for themselves. And he said, maybe, maybe that is. Um, Maybe an acoustic guitar is the vehicle that can provide a, a melody for that. And that, along with some other key bits of information, um, and this is before a camera was picked up, so we, we just had the script and dialogue with Luca. Um, I'm shooting it in an understated fashion. Um, it's going to be on film. I don't want the music to overpower the film. Um, and, and some very elegant phrases that were that really clued us into what we needed to focus on. So the majority of our initial work was finding that that landscape, experimenting with an acoustic guitar to see what we could come up with, what to set that guitar in to make it interesting and feel right. Really focused on the sense of um, these characters and their journey. So it was a nice treat later when we got around to Sully and we're hearing make it as perverse. This he needs to sound like perversion to, to delve into that world. But I think the biggest moment for us that, we, that we'll remember forever in our careers is um, when we saw the first cut of the film, which was, as Attica said, four, four and a half hours maybe. It was spellbinding and we got to see what 
these guys brought to the table, the transformation from page to picture, the humanity and the vulnerability and the intense creepiness <laughs> in various cases of how these characters came to life. And it feeling like that thing that Luca does, that he brings a, there's a humanity to it. There's a, there's a warmth and a natural, just something, you know, the, the choices of shots and where the camera lingers, um, the genius of what Taylor brought to the, the character, you know, of just watching her face be able to convey, just, just really, really made, made us feel um, very grateful to, to be a part of this and, and very much informed, okay, this is what this picture is. And, and it's very exciting to be involved in. Uh, well, I have to say, as a fan of this movie, hearing that there's a four-hour version, you know, I'd like to, I, I'd like to see that. I hope it comes out on Blu-ray or something at some point. What, uh, what kind of things did you have to take out to get it down to the two hours, and was that a difficult process for either for David and uh, Luca? Uh, the draft that Luca read was, by design, a very long draft. I think it was almost 140 pages, and my thought was that we would cut it down together. And I was surprised when Lucas said he wanted to shoot all of it. Um, and, and, it and we did shoot all of it, uh, with one or two exceptions. And I think those scenes that didn't end up in the final cut of the film were really helpful to build the sort of the, the actors' sort of vectors into it or to flesh out certain dynamics that you do feel the energy of in the scenes that are in the final cut. Um, but, you know, as a road movie, and I took the road movie genre as the chief way of structuring the film. And, of course, a road trip has lots of detours and a little bit of torpor here and there and red herrings and people you meet once and don't expect to meet again, but sometimes you do. And, and I think in a structure like that, it was, it was relatively easy to excise things because the whole shape of the film was fairly tattered anyways because it was mimicking a sort of a structure of life that is fairly tattered. Do you have anything to add to that, Luca? Or? Well, there were avenues that the characters of Marin and Lee were getting toward that I felt, we felt, that somehow um, contradicted the purity of their love story. And that's where we almost easily had to lose something that we loved very much. But uh, Well, I love this movie, and I could talk with you about it all night, but I see the, the light on. We're out of time. So thank you so much, everybody, thank you. for coming and talking thank with me. Thank you. About it. Thank you.